Hello, hello everyone. I'm glad to be here. My name is Otávio Santana. Today, I will talk a little bit more about frameworks, especially in NoSQL in Java, uh, NoSQL database. I kind of enjoy this kind of uh, database engine. And that's why I usually talk about it. So if you want to know more about those frameworks and also the integration, please let let, let us know. Besides, you are able to do questions. Please, if you have any question, let me know. I usually prefer the bar style conversation. Unfortunately, uh, we are not able to do physically right now. Hopefully in the, the future, we are able to do this kind of presentation like Bowie in somewhere. So with no pandemic situation, hopefully if without uh, war and hopefully maybe uh, the next semester or next month or soon as possible, we, we are able to, to do this kind of thing. And right now, I hope that you are safe at home. It doesn't matter where you are right now. And we are basically waiting a couple of men, a minutes to start. So please let me know where you're from. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm Brazilian. I was born in Salvador City. That's a city in the coast. Yes, close to the beach. Salvador is really, really famous because of the carnival. I guess it is the biggest party in the world. As far as I know, yes. With the pandemic situation, they are not, we are not able to uh, do this kind of party yet. Hopefully soon we are able to. I lived in Sao Paulo. That is the biggest city in Brazil where we're able to even travel to the whole continent, South America, North America easily, and even the Europe. And right now I'm living in Portugal. So it's a wonderful place with a nice weather. And I still do my open source because I love too much. So it's like my, my hobby slash uh, job. Basically, I, I have been working with open source for a while. And let's wait more, I guess, two minutes, right? So let's wait a couple minutes and then we start. I will share my screen and okay, I can go ahead. One second. Yes. I'm wearing pajamas because I'm working at home. That's, that should be something good to work at home, right? So that is this kind of thing. So I'm using my ho blue hobby, my favorite one, with my Star Wars uh, shoes and my pajama. But anyway, today is not about me, right? Especially not about my, my terrible taste to Geek, geek things like Star Wars and Matrix, this kind of thing. But anyway, let's talk about Java. Um, again, hello everyone, and uh, nice to be here. I'm glad to be here. Unfortunately, visually, hopefully, hopefully soon you're able to do it and physically. Uh, today I will cover the frameworks, especially the difference between NoSQL and Java, what is Java, what is NoSQL, the challenge that we you to understand about NoSQL database, the pain falls around the NoSQL and Java database, the type, the styles. Uh, a little bit about me. So who am I? I'm Otavio Santana, I'm a distinguished engineer at Super Innovation. My Twitter handle is at Otavio Java. So if you want to know more about software, software engineer, I'm usually writing about software architects in, in my main target is principal, staff, and sync engineer. So if you want to go to this technical path, career path, 
please follow me. For example, last time I wrote about C4 model, how we are handle and using on my company. Oh, and then we talked about Tech Raider, and then hopefully in two weeks, I will write article about architecture decision records. Um, Java champion, a member of the executive uh, group of Java, so the ACP. As I mentioned before, I enjoy to be an open source person, so Apache committer, Eclipse committer, Eclipse project leader. And yes, when I do have free time, I usually prefer to stay at home instead of have a social life. Uh, I Yes, believe it or not, I usually do that even before the pandemic. I enjoy to write articles in books, especially about technology. But today we will cover NoSQL and Java words. But first, we must understand what is NoSQL database. Uh, and a NoSQL database is a not database engine. So we have the same rules or the same aspect of the SQL technology, a relational database. So I'm able to insert, to retrieve, to delete, and update any kind of formation. But instead of I have a standard, I have several ways to communicate with this kind of NoSQL. As um, we probably know everything has a trade-off. The good advantage is you are able to use particular behaviors of this kind of NoSQL database, particular structure to this kind of database, but you need to understand exactly each NoSQL is for. Uh, and in NoSQL world, we are we define NoSQL by the structure and the way the, the information is storage the first one is key value where it looks like if you are a java developer with a map or i have a key and then i have a value and i'm only able to find information by the key i have a couple of implementation i guess the most popular ones are ready hello cast react i guess deprecated right now but there are if in spawn and so on and basically here we have a sample. I have a follow as a key, and then it returns a sun as value, Aries as a key, war as value, and so on. The next step, and the next step, uh, Killian Osiko, yes, uh, column family, the next step, the next type, sorry. We also have several implementation at, at base, Scylla, Cassandra, SimpleDB, Caldera, and DynamoDB. It's pretty similar to key value, where I have a key and a value, but this time, instead of I have a huge blob of information, I can split this information in small piece, where we call that as column. So right now I have a huge amount of columns to store my information. For example, here, I have my key Apollo, or I have my columns, in this case, yes, one, where the name is Daddy and the information is the string Sun. Aphrodite, two columns, one with Daddy, another one with the color, and so on. As you can see here, it's a little bit different from the relational database where the, the column appear just when I need it, instead of what happened in the relational database, I need to create a structure and then use. And if I don't put any kind of formation there, the information will appear as new, OK? On this case, no. If I don't put the information, it won't appear, OK? The next one is a document, where it looks like a JSON or XML file. Again, we have a couple of implementation called B, MongoDB, called page, and so on. Graph. This one here is so fascinating that I should one day just talk about this kind of database where I have relationship inside uh, relationship. In this case, I have one object that holds or handles the whole relationship information. 
Because of that, I have properties in my relationship and also have direction. In this case here, I have three entities, Apollo, Aries, and Kratos, and I have direction in this relationship. For example, Kratos killed Apollo. However, I'm not able to see to say that I call Apollo kill Kratos. No, because it's of opposite direction. In this case, my relationship is named was killed by. So Apollo was killed by Kratos. And then something happened with Ares. So Kratos killed Ares and Ares was killed by Kratos. And in some cases, I have two objects to define uh, a two-way direction. So like Apollo and Ares. So Apollo is Ares' brother and Apollo is Ares, uh, Ares is Apollo brother. So I have two ways directions. And that's interesting, especially when the social media, think about it. For example, that is so famous people who, who everybody knows, but not necessarily these famous people who uh, knows everybody who knows him. For example, I know Cristiano Ronaldo, who is a famous play, player, soccer player in Portugal, but it's not totally uh, true that he knows me just because I know him, right? So I know Chris Evans, who is an actor who did Captain America, but it does not mean that he knows me because of that. Once we talked about NoSQL database, we need to remember the huge challenge that we are facing right now. Uh, right now, we have over 200 implementations of NoSQL database. And I mentioned four categories, however, more are coming. So we have time series, we have multi-model types, so we have much, much more categories coming. And which will become more popular, this kind of NoSQL database. And for sure, as I mentioned before, so I have 200 NoSQL database. It's impossible to know the uh, specific API to each NoSQL database that uh, exists. And also, I'm a Java developer. I need to find one way to make my life easier when I talk about their engine. And when we talk about integration between Java and NoSQL database, we have categories. On those categories, we can talk, you have two definitions. One about the level of communication of one API or framework and your usability. Uh, in the communication level, we need to think about two levels. The lowest one is driver where you can think about JDBC. And another one is my object mapper, where I'm able to use, you can, uh, I can able to use the analogy between a JPA, but to no SQL database. And in, when I go to usability, I need to think about the specific API where I have one API to one specific no SQL database and agnostic where I have one API to multiple uh, NoSQL vendors or NoSQL implementations. Every choose that I am able to, to decide here, every, every decision has a trade-off. So that's why we're gonna go through these details to understand a little bit better and then go through the frameworks in the ecosystems around NoSQL database. The first one is the driver where I have the benefits of full power. I can go deep in that NoSQL database. I have a huge flexibility in the side of NoSQL. I can have my semantic close to the database itself, but it's so low level communication. So if I want to have my NT, I need to do integration between my NT and this NoSQL database. Usually it's not portable. You spend more time to learn how to use. And unfortunately, 
I have a huge about, amount amount of bullet plates, especially because uh, to do the conversion between my NT and NoSQL database in this NoSQL database driver, I need to convert uh, my NT string and my type a string, my type int integer, and sometimes you to do that over and over and over again. So sometimes I will spend more time doing this kind of mapper than doing my logic itself. And that's not good, especially because when we talk about soft development, we usually don't have time. This is a sample of NoSQL uh, integration as driver. This one here is a MongoDB driver, the official one, where I create my client through the settings. Then I have my database. I created my collection. Just to remember, MongoDB is a schemaless database. So I assume I, I did the get collection. I don't have I don't need to have a create table or create database. I did that and here you go. It will create to me if it does not exist. I create a document, so a name and it his respective value. So and then I search one. Remember, if I have an entity, for example, person, I need to put this information one by one. So I need to create a, a document name, a document age, a document birthday, something like that. And then so so on. And think when I have a person who has a list of uh, social media information. So I need to do an interaction to do that, uh, if, to put that information in those database. So I will have a huge amount of boilerplate. To decrease this complexity, okay, here's some samples of drivers. So Neo4j from Java, they restart Java driver to Cassandra. The already Java MongoDB driver, the one that we saw. And on the other hand, I able to use a higher level of communication to do the mapper to me. So I'm gonna reduce the bullet plate. I will be closer to the my object. So to my domain, if you start to use a DDD, it will be much easier to learn how to use, especially because I will have a template. So for example, I have my NT person, and then I have my template and to insert that information, I need, just need to put a couple of annotation and use this template and then template uh, the insert method, something like that. However, I have issues again. First, the impedance between two paradigms. Um, Java is object and MongoDB is document. So. A lot of things that I, I have in Java are now able to reproduce or emulate in Mongo and so on. And metadata, right? You probably saw several discussion around reflection and also the uh, beauty time or ahead of time compilation, Quarkus, Micronauts, something like that. So usually it's, it runs on Reflection it, it is not good. So this here is a sample of mapper. This case will be with Cassandra, where I have my CQL session. Session. I will create my mapper builder, and then I have my book down data access object, and based on that I will create my clean code book. And with my save method, as you can see, I'm able to do and say nothing about the Cassandra at this moment. As a developer, I just need to use the save method. And, and that is it. And I would also to do interaction. In this case, I did the select from this key space, and that is it. I did the map to these books. So I decreased the complexity. However, I was a little bit far from the database aspect. So I mentioned the two both of level communication. So driver close to the database and far from the, the domain. The mapper is close to the domain and far from the database. As I mentioned before, trade-offs. 
Let's go to usability of these kind of APIs or frameworks. I have a specific one where I have one API to one SQL database. It usually has the full support to everything that I want. Usually it's related to the NoSQL provider itself. And once it's closer to the vendor, it's usually lighter than the agnostic one. But what I will gonna lose is I'm gonna have a vendor looking and I need to learn one mapper to each NoSQL database. I already showed the data stacks mapper. I have more, I have Neo4j OGM, Object Graph Mapper. I have Morphia, that is our implementation to MongoDB. Here you go, I mentioned before. So this one here is my data start. It's a Morphia one. So I able to do this kind of query. I have made book, my book. I did a query. I select the field, what contains the title and then find to list. Let's move to the next step or the, the last type. So I have one agnostic API, but what does that mean? So I'm able to use one API to multiple implementations. And that's awesome because I am able to, to run a polyglot past tense. Why? Because with async API, I'm able to use Cassandra, MongoDB, whatever. But I need to pay attention on the overpromising because if each NoSQL has a different uh, structure, it does not make sense to use the same model to different kind of database. And feature, usually this agnostic API is a little bit behind the specific one. Uh, um, and once we talk about the API types, so driver, object mapper, specific, agnostic, let's go through the next and the last step is about the platform. What does mean the platform? Platform is when I, based on this kind of API that I mentioned before, so any kind of level or any kind of usability, I have my whole environment around this API to integrate to NoSQL database. So I have a dependency injection to just inject my object or my template in, uh, database. I have my template where I able to do integration between my object, my entities with the database. I have the repository. When you talk about the repository, I usually mention the nice feature where I'm using the interface and I don't care about the implementation itself. I just create an interface, find by name, and this framework will handle to me that conversation. And the last one is a configuration, especially the two factor application where we have the third factor, where I'm able to uh, configure the NoSQL database if the output directly password and credential in my code, especially because it's not safe, it's not a best practice. And also it's not easy to handle, especially when I have a multiple, uh, multiple case or multiple uh, environments. And let's go to the first platform. I have a hibernate OGM where it's a JPA that is nice because the developer already knows JPA. And also they know this API. I would use the same API to NoSQL database. So I'm able to use all the features that I have on the NSQL to NoSQL. So I would use JPTL. I'm able to use the whole hybrid family, for example, full text queries. I'm able to use hybrid search and so on. The idea sounds amazing. Right, so with async API, I'm able to use the whole features in both SQL and NoSQL database. Uh, the dependency injection might happen through CDI or EGB. The template is the JPA APIs 
There is no repository like we do have in the APA. There's no third factor application, and they usually work with map data. Uh, here is hybrid H configuration, the persistent XML, where I have the same JPA notation, the exactly once. So philosopher, NT, ID generated by UUID, and so on, and man to any. And then I have my implementation where I returned the my NT million factory and then it will create my NT manager. And finally, I will begin a transaction, persist, and then close the transaction. And here you go. The first point with no SQL, I should not have relationship usually. I should use the desnormalization way to to optimize the performance of the database. And usually in NoSQL database, the normalization is your best friend. So with that, the API kind of drive me to the wrong direction. Also, I need to use a transaction. And if I go to the MongoDB documentation itself, they have a huge wor worrying about you should not use the transaction a lot. So try to use the same API to both. I am driving, I'm pretending to drive to a failure case. It's like, okay, I have a boat, I have a plane. Both are trans trans transport. So let's use the same API. In this case, I'm not able to fly. I'm not able to, to go to the to the sea, I need to go just to, to move ahead somehow. So sometimes create a two generic API, I lost the particular behaviors that matters to us. That's why on this platform, I don't like the hybrid OGM approach. But to respond with that, we have Quarkus that, that has CDI-like, Active record and also repository, this kind of thing. So, my dependency injection goes through Quarkus DI. My template, I'm able to use the Mongo uh, template and also my active records. My repository is a kind of a Panache MongoDB repository. The configuration goes through micro profile configuration and there's no reflection this time. So. Everything goes through my compilation and the build time or compilation time. So it will be faster than any framework that will use annotation by uh, read the information by reflections. So here we have the same philosopher. As, a key, uh, as you can see, I'm using active records. So I'm extend uh, the empty the here, where because of that, I'm able to do a search. So name, name, find by name, something like that. I'm doing the find by name, for example, in the same uh, class that is active record. And as any active record, I have the benefits to have one class with everything, the, uh, the database information and also the domain information. But I broke the single off responsibility and yes, it's a matter how and when you're gonna do that. So if you want to do a simple domain or a simple entity, sometimes it's better to break the single of responsibility to have just one class like this one here. So I just have two fields and one, one query. So in this simple case, I don't see why not use active records, but yes. As much information you have, you have, you need to think about break more and responsibility. For example, if I don't want to use active record, I'm able to use this repository. As you can see here, I have my class philosopher repository that implements the, my Panache Mongo repository. And I'm doing the find by name here. Based on that, I have two options, as I mentioned before. The philosopher, I'm able to persist by the itself, 
or update or delete, I do any kind of thing. But if I don't want to use active record, I have my repository. Uh, right now, as far as I know, Quarkus provides support to two NoSQL database, MongDB and Cassandra, and probably the Redis, but I'm not sure. If you are a Google of distance, please uh, <laughs> let me know. I might be wrong about the support right now. But let's go and let's move on to the next platform. So Micronaut. So Micronaut to me is the most efficient compilation time dependency injection that I have solved. And it has a Micronaut data that initially has support to SQL in a relational database, but in the future, they are looking for, as far I know, to have support to NoSQL database. About the platform in Micronaut, the penance injection in Micronaut inversion of control. The template is Micro Client, Mongo Client in this case. As far I know, it only has support to Mongo. The repository, it, it does not have support. There is micro node configuration, Java notation processing to solve this kind of thing. And I have my philosopher using this annotation in perspective where I have the name and the codes. And based on that, I'm able to use my philosopher service, but instead of the another ones, I need to put much, much more codes as you can see here, so I'm using my, I, inject, I will inject my mobile client. I did my query by the name, so show by name. I did the, my find out, save a philosopher. And as you can see, to save, I need to do a huge amount of boilerplate. So I need to do a mobile client, get database, get collection, and then return my mobile collection. So it's kind of driver communication level and a specific API. And let's move on to Spring Data. To me, as far as I know around the NoSQL database, it's a more mature. It is the one that has more features, that has more support and so on. The database injection goes, goes through Spring version of control. The template, Spring has several templates because it has support to several NoSQL database. To, in this case, I mentioned one template, but that is Cassandra template and so on. Uh, repository, that's a bunch of repositories types. So paging, sorting, repository, crude repository, and so on. The configuration happened on Spring configuration in the metadata, as far as I know is going through reflection. However, right now they're looking for the Spring Native, the native that will have support to Crowd VM. Therefore, they need to decrease the number of reflection inside Spring. This one here is simple with the same philosopher annotation. So my document and the ID. I have my repository. Basically, there is a tree of repository where I started with crude repository, and then I, I able to have several specializations. So I have my JP specialization that is a spe that comes from crude. I have Mongo repository that is a specialization from paging sorting repository and so on. In this case, here I have my philosopher Plato. I insert by template, but I'm able to use the repository. And as far as I know, it's the most clean and the most right approach of DD in those API belongs to Spring. And okay, Otav, you mentioned before about NoSQL, there is over 200 database several times, but how about the standards? Is there is no way that I memorize over 200 APIs. Yes, the number of NoSQL database are increasing a lot. That's why we believe that the time to standard is now. But as you can see, this article 
is from 2012. It's a little bit old and it's a little bit hard to to do it right now, especially because we have a, a, a huge amount. And as you can see, as computer, computer world said, the main advantage of relational database is because it's standard, because I'm able to use, I'm able to change between those two databases and I'm able to reduce my complexity to start. So if I know SQL ends, I'm able to use MySQL, MariaDB, uh, Oracle, Postgres, and so on. An initial step. I did it to start, to install, and done. And that's why they decided to do several products inside NoSQL database. For example, here uh, in the Oracle, Java EE proposed in the Java EE9 a proposal to Java for the cloud with NoSQL database, where uh, JPA will extend to use no SQL one. So it will be a kind of thing with JDBC where we will have one JDBC to column document key value and graph. They say something will happen with the JPA. Uh, yeah, that is our question here. Do you think the standardization is likely at least for each NoSQL category, yes, I do so. I believe that one type, one API, or one type, one API, because I'm able to use this particular and specific behavior that matters to me, but I'm able to, 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 to communicate transparently between the, those types. For example, I'm using key value. It doesn't matter if this value, this implementation is Redis or has a cast. Unfortunately, it does not go further with Oracle. Uh, as you can see, there is no uh, Java E right now, Jakarta E. There is no Java one anymore. So, unfortunately, the idea did not go further. We also have Apache Tinderbox. So, right now, it's the most successful case of standard inside NoSQL database, but it's it is only to graph database. So you are able to think or do the analogy between JDBC, but only to graph. It provides a common language that's Kremlin. If right now it has support, it has support to over 30 graph database. So that is the syntax. It's basically an API where you're able to use Java, Groovy, and something around that. So for example, give my graph looking for who has the name Grammy and uh, and then go to who know it, who know it, who know it, and list by values. So basically what I'm doing here is uh, the frames of frames Gremlins, okay? And I'm able to do the chain, management chain, starting from Gremlin up until the CEO. So look to somebody who has the name Gremlin and repeat and manage until I got the title of CEO and list this path through the name. There is also a SQL to graph database. Unfortunately, I did not receive any upgrades and updates since uh, 2019, it has support to 20 graph database. That includes support to Gremlin itself. It's the idea is is to be now for j based. So the same API you're able to use to 20 graph database. But as I mentioned before, unfortunately, there's no too much update on that initiative. When we talk about graph right now, the most famous one is still the Apache Tinkerbox. In the Java world right now, this one is what they want I'm working. That is the specification that is Jakarta E NoSQL. By the way, it was the first one where I have two layers, almost the same thing that we saw in the Oracle proposal, 
where I have two layers, one to do the lower communication level, level DDBC to NoSQL, and one higher abstraction or mapper layer, the JPA to NoSQL database, where each type has your own implementation. So I have column with mapping and communication. I have document with mapping and communication and so on. The exception, UB graph. Graph only has mapping. Why? Because the communication does exist. That is the Apache Think about. So why not use it? So two layers about the, the level. I will have one common couple of annotation. And because of that, I'm able to use, uh, I can be able to go to column and document using the same annotation as much as possible. As Jakarta uh, standards, I'm able to use the whole platform to make it possible. So my dependency injection will be CDI. Uh, the template will happen pretty similar to Spring. Indeed, Spring was the, the major inspiration to write this specification. I also have a repository that looks like the Spring one with several families. The configuration is happening with microprofile configuration, but it will soon uh, maybe goes to Jakarta uh, configuration one. And my metadata happens through reflection and annotation processing. It is a simple. One main highlight here, it is you must to use annotation to each field you want to uh, to persist. So right now I have the NT to define the NT. I did to define NT and column to define each field. I will use storage. Okay. I have my repository, as I mentioned before. So repository interface, repository, and so on. I have my philosopher here, Thales Miletos, with my template. It's pretty, again, it's a pretty similar. I'm using MongoDB here, but you can use Cassandra template, Elasticsearch template, and so on. And I'm also able to use the repository. So save, delete, find by name, find by ID, whatever. Uh, that is all for today. I guess I have at least five minutes to questions, right? If, if you have a question, please let me know. The main goal here was to demonstrate a little, a little bit uh, the approach and the challenge to use NoSQL database. So as I mentioned before, we have over 200 and I need to find one easy, easy way to integrate that with Java. And also I mentioned that I have several APIs and I can find this API through two ways. One, by I can define by levels or usability. And based on this definition, I can have a platform. Basically, the platform is the API plus several environments or several tools that make my life easier to code Java with NoSQL. And then I show it to you Quacus, Hibernate, Micronaute, Jakarta E. And that is it. So if there is no further questions, thank you, everybody. OK, there's one question here. Can you use GenoSQL Simple Philosopher and Redis? Uh, yes, indeed, you can use the same rotation. OK, let me show my, my the code here. Indeed, I have a couple of time. So, the philosopher to the same philosopher class here. So the annotation will be exactly the same. So I have the empty here, as you can see. I have the ID, right? So I have my ID. And then I will have my name. The main difference between Redis and, and, and other database, it is, once I'm using Redis, 
they will look only to the ID and anything else you be the value. Okay, so if I come here, I'm, I'm as you can see, I have my container. I'm using, for example, select, I'm using document template. Let's use template. No, I said template. You know. And I can do basic operation. And as you can see, the basic operation you be insert something and then return something by the ID. So I don't have a good imagination, so I would choose this kind of thing here. So I would you to find, to delete, and so on, this kind of thing. With Redis, I'm able to do exactly something. So if I come here, Uh, I mean, as you can see here, I just put a simple with mapping document, where as you can see here, the mapping document has the mapping core dependence. What does it mean this mapping core? It to be this annotation here. So basically, the, the common annotation will belongs to uh, the mapping core. So with the mapping core, I will annotate the whole definition and each mapping will have your own template. So the annotation will be the same. However, the template will be a little bit different. And the repository, it doesn't matter to, to us. So what I'm able to do, interface, uh, let's take the name here. Repository. As interface where I do extend repository. I don't remember. I guess the first one will be the yeah. It doesn't matter to me. What we can do here is okay, template, you know, container. If you are not familiar with CDI. Basically, it is CGI.O or higher. We have support to Java SE. So, what I'm going to do here is load for repository class and then get. Here you go. Hey, Octavio, what happened if I have two implementations? So, we need to specify with qualifier so for example oops. if i want to use with key value i have a database qualifier to key value or to document but it matters only when i have for example here the the doc the mapping document and also the mapping value if i only have the document i'm or just one implementation type i don't need to go through these details here but also have to i mean, need to do that and the main difference again remember the template is the connection between the database and your object. So if I want to use template here, I, I have the key value. Oh, I need to update it. They, they may have been profile here. Sorry. Key on. It's supposed to work. Right. 
key value template. So for some reason it's not working. I can let me see. So yes, I have my key value here. Key value template. Okay, let's see. Well, templates. Yes, I don't have a huge imagination. The main difference here is I can do a get, right? So it philosopher, and it will return to me the ID. So I, as you can see, I have one API, and with this API, or I have one annotation with this couple of annotation. Am I able to uh, inject to run anything that I want to? So if I have a MongoDB already running, that is it. If you want to run this time, I guess I don't have enough time. There's more questions. Uh, you're able to execute this simple code here. So let's go here. Let's go to my NoSQL. Report story. This one here. So let me share the screen. Where you are able to see, we have the Docker Compose that has a couple of services. So Cassandra, Mongo, Neo4j, and Redis. And Everything goes through a single entity here that is God. So I have an entity annotation. And with this, this entity here and this single annotation, I'm able to go through those APIs, so column, and document, graph, and key value. So it's worth to try. So please try it and give us feedback about this specification. So it's worth to try. If there is no further question, thank you for your time, please uh, stay in touch. You are able to do interaction inside Twitter or this kind of thing. It's a huge pleasure to us, at least to me. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.